Now, so to manage the diabetic dyslipidemia, assess the cardiovascular risk score with whatever uh, you can say uh, risk scale you want to use. Q risk is generally recommended in India. Determine the ADL goal for that particular patient and then start your diabetic dyslipidemia management. Higher the risk, more robust ADL lowering is to be done. Uh, so, initiate the lipid lowering therapy either with statins or sometimes with statins and azetamide. If the LDL target is not achieved with high intensity statins or if the statins are not tolerated by the patient, then you have an option of either using PCSK9 targeted therapy or you can use bempedoic acid. And there are a lot of more drugs which always are in uh, investigation, in glycerin and all those. But we will talk about that in some other session. So, choice of lipid lowering therapy uh, depends on how much expected LDL lowering that drug can really offer you and what amount of LDL reduction can each agent offer. So, moderate intensity statin, you can expect 30% LDL lowering. High intensity statin, you, are, you can expect, as I already told you, 50% or more of LDL lowering. High intensity statin plus azetamide, 65% lowering. PCSK targeted agent, uh, you can expect 60% LDL lowering, PCSK9 plus high intensity statin, 75% lowering can be expected and PCSK targeted agent plus high intensity statin plus azetamide, you can expect 85% LDL reduction. And uh, depending on the situation, you can certainly use that. Again, this is a flow chart, 2019 European Society of Cardiology. Uh, depending on the patient's uh, destined or decided target, you can start with a, uh, you can say drug, statin, azetamide, uh, bempedoic acid or maybe different combinations and maybe ultimately injectable PCSK9. Why I am mentioning PCSK9 as, as at the end is they are injectable and they are certainly more costly compared to the oral agent. That's why. So, but, but the, if the patient is not attaining LDL target, then you have to certainly use the PCSK9. So, uh, high intensity statin, uh, if the LDL goal is not reached, then add azetamide. Again, if the LDL goal is not reached, then use PCSK9 and try to attain the uh, LDL target. So, in this is uh, as far as very high risk uh, patients are concerned. So, again, there is no difference. If the risk, risk is high, then the target is more low, lower and more stiff. So, you have to use those drugs accordingly. And uh, uh, then, uh, uh, the, what are the benefits? You can certainly, with a good at LDL attainment, coronary atherosclerotic plaque regression can be expected, statistically significant reduction in composite of CV death, MI, ischemic stroke, and need of coronary revascularization. Cardiovascular clinical benefits increases with more and more of LDL lowering with no observed uh, benefit plateau. Now, is there anything like maybe risk of uh, high intensity statins? Well, uh, in some trials, especially Jupiter trial had shown that in old ladies who were using uh, high uh, dose of rosuvastatin, then their risk of uh, getting new onset diabetes because of statins, that certainly got up. But for one new development of diabetes, there were practically six ACVD events which were prevented. So benefit to risk ratio is always in favor of using of statins rather than not using statins. That's something which is important. So there is a possible association with diabetes mellitus, possible association with hemorrhagic in, intraparenchymal stroke with especially long-term uh, follow-up is required to stamp this complication. Cataract, the com this complication is unreal and again long-term study is, is to be required. Statin use and stroke, statin use and cataract, you need certainly you can say more ascertainment on that. No data to support any association of statins with cancer, hepatobiliary toxicity, neurocognitive impairment, hypogonadism, or hematuria. I am ending my discussion with uh, a case uh, example. This is a postmenopausal lady. She is a non-smoker, hypertensive, diabetes uh, uh, of uh, long-standing A1C, 8%. She has proteinuria and retinopathy. So, microvasculars are already there. She has a mixed dyslipidemia. You can look at that. Triglyceride, uh, total cholesterol 270, very high. <laughs> 175, certainly very high, HDL low 40, triglyceride 200 and she is not on any lipid lowering therapy. Uh, so, if you really calculate the ASCV risk for this lady, the 10 year risk calculates to be 29.3% which is certainly very, very high as you can uh, of course understand. So, uh, this is what it is. LDL goal, the patient's risk is very high. 
So we need to really take that lady from 175 to 55. Correct. So uh, that is something which is our target. And so this is this is something which we have decided. We have assessed the series with the uh, AC. Score we have calculated less than 55. So now, how you decide the and decide about the treatment decision? So uh, obviously, a high intensity statin, uh, if required, azetamide, if required, uh, uh, PCSK, if required, vampiric acid. Okay. So uh, moderate intensity statins, you can expect from to come down from 175 to 123. If you add azetamide, you can expect to come to 96. Still, the target is not achieved. If you use high intensity statins, you can expect to come down to 88. Add azetamide, you can expect to come down to 61. But it is only with PCSK9, which are very potent uh, LDL lowering agent, and PCSK9 combined with high intensity statin, that you can expect this lady to come down below 55. So you will naturally choose, uh, preferably choose a combo of high intensity statin and PCSK9 uh, in the uh, targeted agent. So uh, targeted LDL goal 50% reduction attain less than 55 milligram percent. Now, the last part, which is very important, increasing the effectiveness of adherence invest intervention. Patient doesn't, you can say, and you don't only start LDL, uh, lowering therapy or statin or any other drug, but you maintain that. And as I told you, you have to maintain that attained target, whatever it is, for a long period of time to give a total, you can CVD free uh, or risk free life for the patient. Uh, this is the latest guideline, 2023, published actually last, now I can say last month, which is August 23. But 2023, European Society of Cardiology Guidelines for Diabetic Dyslipidemia, risk, look at the severe risk categorization of the patients with type 2 diabetes. Uh, they Because they are European people, they use the score system. Score is systematic coronary artery risk estimation. And now they have what is called as score 2 for diabetic patients. Very high risk, high risk, moderate risk, depending on the patient profile. And the target, very high risk. LDL less than 55, high risk less than 70, moderate risk less than 100. That is as far as the European guidelines are concerned. And these are the uh, different class and level of recommendation in patients with type 2 diabetes at moderate severities. LDL target less than 100 is recommended. This is class 1 level A recommendation. Type 2 diabetes high severities, LDL target less than 70, again 1A uh, respectively class and level. In patients with type 2 diabetes at very high severities, LDL target less than 55, again class 1 but level B recommendation. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, just uh, you can say brief uh, mention about Bempodiac acid. The Bempodiac acid has come in picture uh, recently. This is a recommendation by Lipid Association of India. Uh, especially the uh, clear uh, outcome trials were done, published a uh, few months ago. Uh, Bempodiac acid is spared of the myotoxicity. So people who have uh, intolerance to statins or maybe muscle associated symptoms or myotoxicity because of statins, uh, you are handicapped, you want to bring down the ADL. So there you can certainly use bempodiac acid. These days, you can use bempodiac acid as an add-on to uh, statins also to bring down the ADL levels more robustly because bempodiac acid is an oral agent. And I can tell you that I have used a lot of bempodiac acid and these are the uh, clear uh, outcome trials you can see very easily blue bar is bempodiac acid uh, compared to placebo, which is brown and uh, uh, green is placebo corrected. So you can certainly see that there is a very good uh, LDL lowering uh, from baseline to uh, week uh, 12 percentage change in LDL. This is clear harmony trial. This is clear wisdom trial, clear tranquility trial and clear, clear serenity trial. So everywhere you have a very good bempodiac acid induced or bempodiac acid uh, stimulated or facilitated LDL lowering. So, uh, look at the clinical risk of the patient, look at the LDL level, and then you can certainly judge the ACVD burden and start your treatment accordingly. So, uh, moderate risk, goal is less than 100 LDL. Uh, <clears throat> high risk, the goal is less than 70. Very high risk, the goal is less than 55. And patients who have repeated events or extremely high risk, the goal of LDL is less than 39 as far as these guidelines are concerned. Also give respect to patient preferences, patients' atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease burden, medication efficacy and safety, and 
look also at the needs of the patient. As I, I'm just now reminding you, high intensity statins can be expected to lower LDL by 50%, moderate intensity statins by 30%, selective cholesterol absorption inhibitor, which is acetamide, 20%, ACL inhibitor, which is bempedoic acid, 15%, PCSK antibodies, 60% LDL, and then uh, you can say uh, the, some other PCSK9 inhibitors, you can expect the LDL lowering by 50%. So, uh, very important, really, uh, though this knowledge is there with us, our uh, rates of uh, using lipid lowering agents are not, you can say, optimal. People here, uh, they have shown people aged more than 20 years with coronary heart disease, defined as self-report of previous cardio coronary heart disease, angina or heart attack, and uh, uh, what is seen really, LDL levels among adults with coronary heart disease in US. So, dark blue is those receiving statins. Pale blue is not receiving statins and uh, the very pale blue is overall. So, you can see here that uh, LDL uh, levels, these are the LDL levels. Look at the uh, high levels of LDL, more than 130. So, naturally, those who are not receiving statins, their LDL levels are high. And uh, uh, the important point here is six, among adults with coronary artery disease, only 67.9% are on statin therapy and 6.4% are on acetamide. So, you need to really uh, take the benefit of statins and LDL lowering to more and more of people, not only at high risk, but those who have established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Uh, coming back coming back to some small groups, this is the current screening guideline for dystrophy in children and adolescents with type 2 diabetes, the ADA and uh, American Academy of Pediatrics have recommended for screening of dyslipidemia in youth with new onset type 2 diabetes once glycemic control is stabilized or three months after medication initiation and thereafter annually. The International Society for Pediatric and Adolescent and Adolescent Diabetes, ISPAD, also recommends lipid screening at diagnosis, repeating tests for dyslipidemia once glycemic control has been achieved or again after three months. And if the lipid profile is normal, it is also recommended to screen with a fasting lipid profile annually. Uh, these are the effects of current therapeutic strategies on dyslipidemia type 2 diabetes in children. Uh, you know very well that you can't use all the uh, statins or PCSK9s or bempedoic acid acetamide very freely in this group of people. So, other measures like low-carbohydrate diet, Mediterranean diet or maybe insulin therapy, metformin, GLP-1 receptor agonists like liraglutide and very extremely obese children, even the use of bariatric surgery, you can see here that they certainly can reduce triglycerides, improve the HDL levels, and maybe uh, at least Mediterranean diet, metformin, uh, they can certainly be expected to reduce LDL. The today study, 55.9% uh, of the youth remained at LDLC goal less than 100 over the first three years. Levels of TG, APOB and non-HDL rose from baseline to the end of the first year and remained at a higher level for the next two years. Only improved glycemic control and weight loss have been associated with improvement in the lipid level. So, in children, the approach is a bit different. Rather than pharmacology, it is more on the lifestyle and weight reduction. Uh, these are the uh, trends of change in lipids, lipoproteins and APOA4 in various stages of CKD. Because CKD itself is a very high cardiovascular disease risk factor and different shades of CKD. This is CKD grades 1 to 5, nephrotic syndrome, patients on hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. You can easily see here that the risk of uh, high to total cholesterol, high TG, uh, the uh, uh, LDL cholesterol is certainly uh, very much prevalent in these patients. In fact, whether lipid lowering therapy should be given in these people is always a matter of contention. There are no very clear cut guidelines here. You have to judge the situation depending on a given case. This is just one study called as a 4D study, uh, which was a multicenter double blind randomized trial. Uh, that included 1,252 type 2 diabetic patients treated on hemodialysis. They have been receiving maintenance hemodialysis for less than two years. Patients randomized to atorvastatin 20 mg per day or placebo and followed for four years. After four weeks, atorvastatin treatment reduced the LDL level by 42% in comparison with only 1.3 with placebo. Despite this significant reduction in LDL, atorvastatin had a non-significant 8% relative risk reduction only on the combined primary endpoint, which was a composite of cardiac death, non-fatal MI, and stroke. 
Moreover, atorvastatin increases the risk of fatal stroke in patient in this patient population. So, uh, these are there are no you can say very clear cut uh, stands which you can take in hemodialysis patients uh, whether they should be on statins or not. And uh, this is my last slide. Uh, this is a grade profile of uh, uh, what is called as pomegranate dalimba. Uh, why this is the last slide is uh, when everything is lost actually. For example, these dialysis patients. Uh, what can you really do? So you can certainly try uh, something which has been published. This is the latest, uh, uh, you can say, journal, uh, current advances in nutrition, that's the journal. And look at the triglycerides, ADL, HDL, etc. Uh, so uh, it has been seen that there is, uh, you can say, a fair amount of lipid-friendly uh, outcome on the, uh, of the use of pomegranate uh, either the pomegranate or pomegranate juice, whatever the patient wants to really prefer. Though the quality of evidence is not extremely good, but for triglyceride, it is quite high. Uh, then total cholesterol, it is moderate. Again, LDL, the quality of evidence is quite high. So uh, if everything is lost and you can't use much of drugs, well, you can use uh, pomegranate uh, for these patients. My friends, I conclude with, a, you can say, quote, which is, there is no science without fantasy and there is no art without facts. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you.